Now that we've worked a little bit with inductors and how they behave in a circuit, let's go into a little bit of how we decide what the inductance of a certain component is in the first place. We follow a very, very similar process as we had when we did our capacitance. Remember when we did our capacitance, we used this governing equation. And for whatever geometrical arrangement with uh, two conductors with building up different charges, we always do this. We assume a certain charge. We don't know how big it is. We just assume it's Q on one conductor and negative Q on the other conductor. And based on that information, we find the electric field of all the points in between such conductors, or at least for one particular line that can lead from one conductor to the other. And why do we do that? Because ultimately we get delta V by doing this integral. And once we have that V, we sub it back in there and hopefully the Q cancels out and we're only left with something that only depends on the geometry. For inductors, we have a very similar process because the inductance is defined to be your magnetic flux divided by your current. Similar to how we had done for the capacitor case, we're going to assume a certain current is running through my coil or toroid or straight wire, whatever it is. We find a magnetic field that's created by that current. And then from that, we work out the flux. And remember, in this case, the flux has the end loops inside this thing just to make the governing equation a little cleaner. We've encapsulated it in the flux itself. And then we put that up in, in there and hopefully the current cancels out and we're just left with something that has to do with the geometry. So let's go through that process for this situation here. Here we have a long cylindrical solenoid. Favorite geometry ever. And they say neglecting end effects. So we can already confidently treat it as an infinitely long solenoid. And as long as the solenoid is long enough, that will make up the bulk of the inductance. So the little bits of the end, it's not going to change our answer so much. Very similar to how for capacitor, we say parallel plates. Most of the middle of the plate will give you the bulk of the capacitance and the edges will give you a little bit of inaccuracy, but not big enough to matter in most cases. So there's my expression for my magnetic field. And we know that this particular field will be parallel to my normal vector and also that is uniform across the entire cross section and every single point inside the coil because it's a infinitely long solenoid so that my flux term becomes significantly easier to evaluate. The B basically becomes like that and it comes right out. So you have N B integrating the area. So you have N B A where your a is pi r squared, having a circular cross section. Subbing in my b, and just because we have this loop density as well as the total loop number, let's unify that. And because in the end we want inductance per unit length. So I'm going to put exposed length like that, and then put the two ends together and make a square. So there's my flux. So finding a little more space. To get L then, I take my total flux and divide by I. Boom, boom. They go away, that's nice. And so to get the inductance, big L, divide by little L, that's my length. I have little n square with the constants and so on and so forth. And then just plugging in numbers, be careful when you do do so because we're talking about 100 turns per centimeter. So we got to make sure we convert things in meters and then we square it. The mu naught has, if we keep working with these units, can basically become Henry's per meter. Then we have pi r square. And we're left with the units Henry's per meter. So 89 milli Henry's per meter. So now that we've found the inductance, they then give us some kind of DIDT. And so to find the induced EMF, we just make use of the governing equation here. So we basically multiply that number by 5 amps per second, which gives us negative 0.44413 volts per meter because we're talking about EMF per length of the solenoid. And there you go. Through using these steps, you can find the inductance of any particular geometry then based on how many loops, how long, what's the area, what is the shape, etc., etc.